All right, so I'm here to review a camera bag called the Think Tank Urban Approach 10. This is a fairly new bag for them, and they were kind enough to send this to me so I could do a review. And the Think Tank, this the our Urban Approach series, is designed for micro four thirds or mirrorless cameras in general. In fact, I don't know, I have a uh, Fuji and uh, the Fuji XE1, and it seems to fit the, the camera equipment that I usually carry with me fairly nicely. It's a really petite bag, as you can see. Maybe it's a little bit too small for me, and in fact, um, if you've seen any of my reviews, you know that really what I'm looking for is a bag that can serve as what I call a crossover commuter bag. And that is one that can go to the office and carry um, my business needs as well as be able to hold my camera, something I carry with me all the time. So it's a little bit too small to be a full crossover bag. And what I'm going to do with this review is simply talk about it as a camera bag and only as a camera bag. All right, so let's start uh, to give you a tour around this bag. Let's start on the outside. Notice that it is a classic messenger style bag. It has a leather band up here just to give it a little bit of dressiness to it and a very small think tank logo embossed here on that leather strip. And you can see because it's hanging out right now that it has a plastic Fastex buckle which secures this flap. Now you'll also notice here the flap is secured with Velcro, so it's got the double security there. But you can see how nice and clean this bag is on the front here. It has a nice sort of business look to it. Um, and then let's swing around to the top here, and you can see what looks like a very small shoulder strap. In fact, this is the handle for the bag, and this is an ingenious design here. Notice that it attaches to the sides of the bag rather than to the flap. And the reason why that's such a good idea is don't forget that this flap, sometimes if you're filling it a lot, the bag filling a lot, the flap is actually going to be up a little bit further, which means that if you had a handle that was set into the center middle of the bag, if you had this flap on a little bit loosely, that same handle would shift a little bit towards the back. Similarly, if you really wanted to cinch down the bag quite a bit, it would shift that handle a little bit towards the front. And as a result of doing that, as many of you have seen in my other reviews, if you have a handle that's offset from the center, it actually, when you hold the bag, it causes the bag to actually tip in towards your knees. Not a good design. So having this as a handle that sits independent of the flap allows this thing to sit vertically, as you can see uh, as I'm holding it right now. So that's really a nice design. I wish that all bags use this as their handles. Some bags don't even come with a handle, which is absolutely nuts especially if you're a photographer and you're in a rush and you just need to grab something and go. If you don't have a handle and you have to grab the actual shoulder strap here, that can be a pretty awkward proposition. So having a handle is essential in my book and this is a good design. The shoulder strap itself is made out of the same material that you would see in a car seat belt. It has little rubber vinyl-like pieces here which you'll see in the inset photo. Um, that allows it to stick to your shoulder. It does move along the shoulder strap, so that's a good design. You don't really want to have it locked in because if you want to wear it on the side like this, and then you suddenly want to do it as a crossbody, you can see here that on the side, this is where the position of this the uh, shoulder pad was, but in crossbody, it would need to move up to here. So having the shoulder pad be able to move along the shoulder strap is essential in my mind. Looking at the side here, sort of underneath where, and by the way, you should know that Think Tank really does create tank-like bags here. This is a, a welded piece of steel. Uh, it's not going anywhere, so where it attaches to the bag is incredibly strong. So you have a pocket here. It's, it's stretchy. It feels like a, um, a Lycra-like material. You're not gonna be able to fit a large water bottle. In fact, you'd probably only be able to fit one of those little 12 ounces, those disposable 12 ounces in here. Um, however, if this is something you don't wanna use for a water bottle, it still is great for something like your iPhone because you'll be able to get quick access to it. Of course, since the top is open, it's a little bit dangerous in terms of security, but it's not too bad. So I like having these mesh pockets on the side, not mesh actually, these Lycra pockets on the side, um, and there are two of them on either side of the bag. On the back here, you can see where it says Urban Approach 10 on the back. And 
There's a little piece of Velcro, which closes up this open pocket in the back. It's not quite big enough for you to be able to fit a file folder. Um, however, you could very easily fit a, a, a magazine. In fact, let me get a couple of things here to show you what I mean by the, what size this is. Okay, so here's a magazine, or actually this is a catalog, and you can see that that'll fit in there without too much trouble. And it's just a little bit more of a squeeze for a folder. It'll fit, but it won't actually go far enough down in it for it to be usable. You can see that it tapers downward towards the base. So can't fit a file folder, can fit a magazine into the back here. Let's take a look into the interior of the bag. As I said, there's a combination of Velcro as well as a plastic Fastex-like buckle. But one of the things I do have to be critical about here with the Think Tank is that the buckle itself, notice that in, in most cases, you would see a bag would have the buckle on the outside. So it's very easy to just unsnap it by reaching and squeezing the plastic prongs and having it release. In the case of the Think Tank, you have to reach up into here. Now, what's unfortunate is that the Velcro itself goes from about right here, from the top, from my fingertip to my thumb here on either side, and the actual Fastex buckle is located right here, which means that you sort of have to reach up in here and fight with the Velcro a little bit to unclip that Fastex buckle. That's not really a great design in my mind. I really wish they had set this Fastex buckle a little bit lower so I didn't have to deal with the, the bag being held closed by the, the Velcro here. In fact, the ideal thing would be simply to have this entirely on the outside of the bag. Of course, when you do that, it takes away from the sort of nice clean look of this outside of the bag. So clearly, Think Tank was more concerned about the fashion than they were the function. You know I also don't love Velcro, especially when you're a photographer. You might find yourself in places where you need to be absolutely silent. Um, but Think Tank understands that, and they have this very simple but workable design called the Sound Silencers. And essentially all this is is a piece of Velcro that covers up the hook part of the Velcro. So the loop goes over the hook, and it essentially eliminates the need to use the Velcro altogether. And then you're relying either on gravity, keeping it down, or if you want to, you can go ahead and use the Fastex buckle to hold it together like so. Okay? All right. Um, you'll notice inside here, they have an ID area, so you can either throw your ID or you can maybe put a few business cards in there. And then on the front here, you'll see that there is an organizer panel. And it's not the most extensive organizer panel. This is a pretty small bag, so you wouldn't be expected to carry everything you need for a, uh, a business meeting or something. But um, as you'll see in the inset photos, I have a couple of places for pens or a stylus, for credit cards as well. I always find these credit card slots to be rather useless. It's much easier to use a, um, a wallet. And then there's a larger pocket here that would pretty easily be able to fit either a wallet or you might choose to put your cell phone into this slot. It's a little bit wider than you'd want it to be for a, um, the cell phone. I actually would have preferred that they get rid of these silly credit card slots and just make this pocket two of the same, but maybe half the size. Or if you could imagine where my pointer finger is right there, put a seam right down from there, and then you'd have two slots that would be able to accommodate an iPhone on either side or an iPhone in your wallet, or maybe an iPhone and your sunglasses. So, uh, not the greatest design, but again, this is primarily for shooting, for um, photography, and not for a, a commuter bag, so it's not as essential that this thing be able to hold all the needs that I have. You can also simply toss whatever you have right into this pocket, because it is gusseted, so it's gonna be able to hold some level of volume in here without too much of a problem. And then if we take a look at the main compartment of the bag itself, you'll see that it has a, a set of dividers in here that are um, they're removable. They're held in by Velcro as well. The actual insert is not removable itself, so that means the whole bag has a lot of structure to it since the bag does not have an independent lift out camera organizer sort of like this, right? It's built into the bag. You can remove the dividers, but you wouldn't be able to remove the foam that essentially encircles uh, all your camera equipment. 
And right now, the way it's set up, you can put in two lenses, and you might be able to put your, uh, your camera in here if it doesn't have the hood. So if, imagine if I were to uh, reverse the hood or not even have it. You can see it fits my Fuji XC1 pretty easily. And I could, uh, I'd have no problem fitting maybe two smaller lenses and then one large lens on the other side and batteries, etc. So it really would do a nice job of being able to contain a pretty good size travel kit for a, uh, a mirrorless camera kit there. And then very importantly, on the back here, there is a slot for a full-size iPad. I have a mini here, so it's not going to show how well it fits the full-size, but it's a perfectly designed padded spot here for a, a full-size iPad, so it'll fit right in there with your camera gear. Um, I would say that I'd prefer to have an exterior pocket for my iPad rather than having to go into this area where I have my camera equipment. Um, and then also, it would be really nice if Think Tank had decided to put a zipper across the entire top part of this flap, particularly since there's no handle or anything here to impede that. And if you had a zipper going across the top here, then you could get access to your camera, you could get access to your iPad if you want to, without having to undo the flap. Um, and to me, that's a nice sort of feature that simplifies getting access to all your stuff. So this is a good bag. It certainly is well made. All Think Tank things are incredibly well made. Um, and there are some smart design features. The si sound silencers and this handle are really brilliant designs. Um, oh, I, I should point out here, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a gap here. Um, and if you were to get caught out in the rain, it actually would not be terribly waterproof because these little areas here would allow water to get in there and you'd always have to be sort of tucking them in there, but eventually they just pop back out again. Um, the beauty of Think Tank though is that they do provide you with this rain cover here and you can easily, this is compressible, so you could just stuff this into some compartment of the bag itself and if it really starts to pour and you're caught out in the rain, then go ahead and toss on this rain cover. Okay, I think that's um, about it for this bag. Decent bag, and um, I think this, this size is really ideal. They do make an Urban Approach 5, which is a scaled down version of this, but I can't imagine going smaller than this for the kind of, of equipment, photographic equipment I'd need for a day out, say, touring a city, etc. All right, take a look at my other reviews, and you'll see that I um, not only review crossover commuter bags and camera bags, but also backpacks, day packs that can serve as crossovers as well. Take care.